Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christie Reisinger, and today we're going to discuss the current best outpatient treatment for a COVID-19 infection. This is a very time-sensitive video, and the data is changing rapidly, so please note the published date of this video. I recently had a friend of mine test positive for COVID-19. She's fully vaccinated, but is 67 years old, and she felt terrible. She had the usual symptoms of fatigue, headache, and fevers. The question that I had was, what is the best outpatient treatment for her infection? At this point, we really have four options for outpatient treatment. They're oral Paxlovid, IV monoclonal antibodies, IV remdesivir, and oral malnupiravir. Is there one that's better than the other with the current SARS-CoV-2 strain that's circulating at this time? I don't think the data or side effects are good with malnupiravir, so I'm not going to discuss that treatment in this video. If you would like more information and data on this medication, please see my prior video about it. I'll put a link in the description. So that leaves us with Paxlovid, Remdesivir, and monoclonal antibodies. Remdesivir is needed to be given intravenously and typically has been used for patients that are hospitalized with really good results. And in January 2022, a study of 562 patients not in the hospital showed an 87% lower risk of hospitalization or death compared to placebo when given in the outpatient setting within seven days of symptoms. But the biggest factor with remdesivir is that it needs to be given intravenously three separate times over three separate days, which is a major hassle. So I've never prescribed this medication and I don't know many in my area that are. So let's remove that medication from the options as well. So that leaves us with Paxlovid and monoclonal antibodies. Is there one choice that's better than another? As always with anything in the medical field, the answer is not always black and white. Let's start with Paxlovid. According to the NIH, this is the first line outpatient treatment for COVID positive patients that are at higher risk and qualify for its use. The things that it has going for it is that it's a pill and at this point, it's available for free. The cons are that it has a bunch of interactions with other medications that can limit its use in patients that take some very common medications, and it causes a terrible metallic taste in the mouth while patients are taking it. I've also talked about the Paxlovid rebound that we're seeing in about 30% of patients. This rebound occurs a few days after symptoms have resolved and patients have tested negative for COVID. We saw this happen with President Biden when he completed his course of Paxlovid. He tested negative for a few days and then started testing positive again without having any symptoms. Most rebound infections are very mild, but not all, and most doctors believe that patients are infectious during their rebound, so that means at least another five days in isolation. The New England Journal of Medicine just recently published a retrospective study of about 4,000 patients in Israel that took Paxlovid. As expected, patients that were higher risk, such as those that had never been vaccinated or had a prior COVID infection, patients that were older than 65, and those with several severe comorbidities, such as heart disease, obesity, and diabetes, got more benefit from using Paxlovid. In fact, patients younger than 65 did not seem to get much benefit from using Paxlovid. And they didn't even include people younger than 40 in their study. So I think if someone is going to take Paxlovid, they should not be on medications that can interact with the antiviral and they should be at higher risk, meaning not vaccinated, never believed to have had a COVID infection, older than 65, or with a few other risks like diabetes, heart disease, and obesity. Otherwise, I just don't think it's worth giving the medication because the benefit doesn't seem to be there. And the more we use this medication, the more risk we have that the virus will develop resistance to it. So what about monoclonal antibodies? These are a bit more of a hassle to get because they require an IV infusion. But in my city, patients can have a medical team come to their house to receive an IV push over 30 seconds but then patients need to be observed for about an hour afterwards to ensure no side effects from the medication occur. The biggest issue with monoclonal antibodies is that the virus has developed resistance to all but one at this point. So if you're going to receive monoclonal antibodies, be sure that it is Bebtelovimab. 
Monoclonal antibodies in general have been shown to be very beneficial in reducing complications like death and hospitalization from a COVID infection in patients that are older and have more risk factors, even when they're vaccinated. Let's look at this chart that was recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine in early August 2022 that compares all of the outpatient medications to one another. The top left side of the chart lists the monoclonal antibodies. The top right of the chart lists outpatient medications. The left side of the chart lists the Omicron subvariants of the SARS-CoV-2 that are circulating now. The very top line is the reference point. This was an earlier strain of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. As we progress down the chart and look at the various variants that have occurred over the last few months, pay attention to the numbers. For this chart, the more effective the medication is, the lower the number will be. So you can see quite a few of the monoclonal antibodies that don't have any effectiveness against some of the newer strains of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And in fact, only one monoclonal antibody has held up against all of the strains, and that's Bebtel Lovimav. Let's highlight that number. And now let's look over to the right side of the chart and see the other medications that I mentioned earlier, including remdesivir, molnupiravir, and nermatrelvir, which is Paxlovid. You can see all three of these medications have held up pretty well against all of the strains so far. Let's look at the bottom row and compare them all. Of course, just because the medication neutralizes the virus does not mean that translates to a better outcome of the infection. But we can certainly infer that when the medication works quickly to neutralize a virus, that's always better for the patient. As I mentioned earlier, the NIH has specific guidelines for outpatient treatment of COVID-19. Let's look at their chart. It shows that patients that are at high risk for progressing to severe COVID-19, the first line of treatment is Paxlovid, which is also known as ritonavir-boosted nermatrelvir. Second line is remdesivir. The third line is the monoclonal antibody Bebtel-Lovimab. And lastly is molnupiravir. I dug into the reasoning as why Bebtel-Lovimab is third line and it's because there have not been any placebo-controlled trials with this specific medication, nor do I think there will be any. And I think it's also because variants have developed resistance against many prior monoclonal antibodies in the past, so there's always a concern that that will occur with Bebtel-Lovimab as well. So at the end of the day, if you're younger than 65, don't have any health issues and have been vaccinated or have had a known COVID infection, you really don't need any prescribed treatment for your COVID infection. But if you're older than 65, aren't vaccinated, or haven't had a COVID infection, or if you have several health issues like obesity, heart disease, and diabetes, then you should be offered Paxlovid. But if you can't take Paxlovid due to the medications you're taking, or if you're hesitant because of the metallic taste or risk for rebound, then the monoclonal antibody Bebtel-Lovimab is a great option. And honestly, at the end of the day, the drug that you can start the quickest is the one that's probably the best choice because the sooner you start the medication against your COVID infection, the better. Thanks for joining me.